the first comment you made to me was one of the most powerful comments I've heard. And it went like this. Helping people, especially women, to find their strength daily is very important to you. That other women must learn how to grow in a healthy way. We all need validation, but validation should not come from predefined success by our parents and unbalanced patriarchy. I felt like I was listening to an erudite TED Talks. This was, it meant a credible amount to me and I kept on reading it. Can you give us some background of that? power that you feel inside oh yes i would love to share so of course it's been a long journey i think uh like people well i have a 14 year old son people Ooh. have to learn to learn to ride a bike learn to do things we grow up have to learn different tasks and it doesn't come natural to feel powerful right away as human beings especially babies were real babies are really powerless so i have to learn that all these years that i am i have become more powerful as i grow and the first thing that i realized that was always hindering me early on was my math teacher when i was eight years old a guy <laughs> a math teacher a man I was only eight years old and I started wearing glasses and I remember in front of 30 students, he humiliated me. He told the class that I am becoming blind and I could never do math right. And as an eight years old, you just didn't understand why he would say such a thing. And you felt completely useless because you felt like Maybe he's right, maybe I am worthless. But of course I was eight, so I didn't really think about that every day. But as I grow into my teen years, it really got stuck in my head, back of my head, mm -hmm. that I was told that I was never good at anything. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't true because I had another teacher, a female teacher, when I was 11, she told me that I have one of the most amazing voice. I can actually use my voice and I can, you know, do a public speech. It's within me if I try. I was very shy, I was insecure, but mm -hmm. she gave me that first push and said, you can change, you can do something differently. And so I think that too experience taught me that Yes, it really hurt when someone said something um, about you, us, not being good enough. But also when someone else, a teacher especially, can give you the direction and the guidance and just said, I believe in you. So now go believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the start of it. I didn't understand that um right away of course with life's experience then you learn more as you go on which mm -hmm. each, each experience you learn something about yourself mm -hmm. and how you can change and overcome the insecurities so rolled out to like 2020 my mother passed away in 2019 my my father did two uh two years before that i didn't know that for so many years I also was listening to my parents' expectation. So it's not a good thing that they're no longer with me on this earth, but it's a good thing that I always feel like spiritually they are with me. I just didn't know that I was living for them, even though for the longest time, I'm already like a computer engineer, I run my own business. We're going to cover some of that. Give me a chance here because you have a phenomenal background with your parents. And I want to speak to what you just said, how much people and their words do affect us. 
from when we're very small, even to when people are in their 80s and 90s, as I experience working with some people and taking my dog to be with them. Um, that was very impressionable, and I'm so glad that you had somebody else come in and help change that view of yourself. Uh, one of the things that I also saw in your childhood was the preempt to life now, that you were part of airport Swiss chocolate and European dry goods. Now, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. All in <laughs> Would you like to share a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, lovely childhood. My dad used to own a kiosk, um, a store in the airport, the Hong Kong International Airport. So at night, even though it's really late, my mom would take us walk over to the airport from our house to meet my dad to pick him up from work. So usually it's around 10 o'clock, 10.30 at night. The store closed at 10, but it's in the airport. So sometimes mm -hmm. if we do get there early enough, my dad will let us go watch planes and go to view, you know, the observatory. And, um, but he was, he, he sells chocolate. Uh, he was selling chocolate and all like kinds of uh, gums, candies and different things. And it was fun because uh, we grew up with tons of chocolates and candies and everything around us, the inventory. Like even in the house, because he had to leave some of the inventory inside the house. And just fabulous to have an experience that almost feel like, it almost felt like that we had unlimited supply of chocolates and candies and gums. You also had an unlimited supply of cultural people and all different kinds of people that were coming in through the airport as yes. well. Correct. That's another amazing experience because mm -hmm. my dad would talk about the people from Australia, talk about the people from Thailand, and you know, yeah, it's international. So my family background was that uh, our, um, our grandparents, they already lived in the United States. Mm -hmm. So my both side of the grandparents. So my grandparents from my mom's side, they were living in Los Angeles. That was my cousins are still in Los Angeles. So we know one day we will move here, um, but the childhood is fun just to learn about different cultures. Yes, my dad would talk about his new friend from, you know, the captain of airline in Pan Am back then, the, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Cafe Pacific, and of course, uh, those airlines and he would get like gifts from them international gifts oh, one time someone from australia actually gave him a big block of cheddar cheese oh my goodness and that it smells so cheesy yeah it smells so much cheese when he brought home that night i'm like oh my goodness but you know that was like when you're six and seven eight like wow you know I, I love the multicultural that you were brought up in and it probably went to a whole lot of your adulthood which mm -hmm. also again is this mammoth part of your life I, I reading about you and studying about you is so wonderful and where you where did you start with this vision you are balancing what most people dream about three distinct areas in life your passion for it clothing a website filled with predominant people from clothing to speakers traveling juggling I, how do you juggle all that I, it's and you've traveled the world <laughs> Um, I, when I became a mother, the, the obvious things was uh, to prioritize family first. So family dinner is not a something I compromise. And so uh, weekends, uh, even though with other hectic schedules or events, especially in the fashion world, there are a lot of events. I used to bring my son, when, even though he, when he was only a toddler, 
I would bring him to board meetings when I was the regional director of Fashion Group International of Dallas. And I believe that at that time, I still believe it. I believe that I'm not changing my world for him. I'm bringing him along to work with me, walk with me. This is my life. And so he's part of it. So he got, he went to all the fashion events and functions with me and my husband too. He's very supportive of that. People always look at us as like, wow, this child is so well behaved mm -hmm. and he really enjoy it. I mean, but you know, I didn't want him to, I didn't treat him as a child. I treat him as my, my son. So um, if I'm doing a certain activity, yes, he's part of that activity. And that's how I handle it later in life. Mm -hmm. But early on, uh, I gave credit to computer science um, as a discipline. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be a fashion designer since I was three years old. I was so plan on that that I told my mother, I'm just going to focus on this path and you just have to buy me all the books and all the <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, I made my parents buy me books on fashion designers, biographies and their fashion, you know, magazines and things that will I, I wanted to, to do. And I would buy crayons and drawing pads, everything. Even though when I was 16, I was drawing every day. Every day after school, the first thing is to take, to take out my drawing pad and start drawing. And I just have a lot of things in my head, so it's good because it gives me an, a, a way to express myself, express the things that I'm thinking, the designs mainly, and the use of colors and everything. But then when I decided to go to college, we're already living in Massachusetts, and I said to myself, I said, okay, you can go straightly, apply to Royal Island School of Design, uh, FIT, uh, Fashion Institute of Technology, or mm -hmm. you may want to think about something else. It's like it just popped up in my head really quick. And um, out of the blue, I remember that eight years old me who was told that I uh, will never be good at math. I decided that I fill out everything computer science. I don't know. I just, at that moment, I remember the eight-year-old I have to rescue. And so I fill out the application, computer science, computer science, computer science. Four schools accepted me. I went into computer science. I said, oh, no. Now what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm doing something I did not like, mathematics. I, do, I was doing something initially I, I thought I could not do, but that changed my life again. Semester, first semester, I started my first programming so assignment. I did very well. Mm -hmm. The first semester, I realized I love, I love the creative process. It's the creative process I crave. It's not because it's fashion or it's computer. It's the process of making something out of nothing. Yes. That was yes. my whole purpose. I found my purpose when I was a fresh, uh, in a freshman year in computer science. And then for my school, Northeastern in Massachusetts, you had to go out and l earn your credits mm -hmm. from working. Mm -hmm. so when you actually work in the field of your study, you also learn about yourself. You learn about how to be professional, but more than anything, it reinforced the fact that I love the creative process. Yes, I can see that in your words when you sent me, uh, every, you know, I asked you for just a simple a bio, but how you created that and how uniform it was, it was such a pleasure to see. But what it did, what you did for me, was that creativeness brought me, it was an invitation into your life. And that I went through your beautiful uh, website, and then I saw all these other people that you've incorporated into your life, into your business, because your business not only is IT and you excel at that, also fashion, and traveling around the world. 
but you incorporate and bring on people with expanded knowledge from fashion to speakers. That is to me a constant invitation, not only for creativity, but expansion of who you are. Can you share a little more where that part came in? Oh, my mind really works like <laughs> well, we know it's 24 your mind, by 7. Something uh, initiated it. Yes, it's, uh, I, I always, my motto is take one step at a time, take baby steps. Yeah, I don't think, I don't see any baby steps in your life. These are quantum leaps. <laughs> it, 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 I, like I would it. like to visualize how you made baby steps even when you were a toddler, but I don't think you did. <laughs> it, but that's a good point. Thank you. Uh, because it, yes, I, I do consider like take one step at a time but I do not mind taking risk. And which is surprising to myself because if you ask the 12 year old Jenny, I would say, no way, I want my life to be exactly one, two, three, four, five, lay out for me, give me the answer now. And I didn't want to take any risk. I want to know exactly what would happen. But now as the older person, um, I think again, it's the engineering discipline that helped me change. Because when I entered the corporate world, I learned that every single process, we I had to learn to work with what we call customers, the internal customers within the corporation. I had to learn to become an accountant to help the accountant to write a new program for their process. I have to help the HR person to write a new process, uh, write an application for the new process, uh, for the existing process, but make it digital. And so those experience at that time, especially later with like real time trading, banking, just really learning about what people do changed me along the way that I see every process actually is the same. The pattern is you have a problem or a set of uh, steps that you need to execute for your job. So this, I have to turn it into a computer program. So what it happens is you learn, you become that group of people, you live in their world for a few weeks, you write out exactly the steps that they take, what they need to do their job, like what they do every day, and then you write a program that will automate some of the process for them and have the end results. Every single thing in life, including how I meet my husband, how I met him, I said, I if I can manage to write a program, then I can meet this guy exactly one step at a time, one, two, three, four, five, and then he's going to happen. He did. <laughs> now, Wolfram, Wolfram, correct? Yeah. Because um, he is German. You wrote a program to meet him? <laughs> I wrote a list. I wrote down a list, but that was after many dating failures. I said, okay, I had enough, but if I'm smart enough to write a program, then I'm going to say these are the 10 things that has to happen, the 10 characters, the 10 strengths that person has to have. And the number one was, I don't know why I put it there, but it's important to me, obviously. I said, number one, you have to be handsome. <laughs> <laughs> number two, you have to be honest. Uh -huh. And number three, you have to be financially independent. Uh -huh. So what happened was when he, I actually, we met through a dating service online. At oh, that okay. time, oh, one and only, way back before match.com, but match.com was coming up. But that's another mm -hmm. service. And then when he emailed me, I like, he really think that he's handsome. <laughs> okay, this is wild. That means he really believes that. And that's good because I want someone who actually have self-confidence. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, <laughs> I agree. And I have to admit, uh, finding love, uh, and I only fell in love once, and uh, 
I was not one of the two women he married. And I felt I was in love with him until I found out he was dead. And then my heart opened, but I had to remember who my father was. My father was incredibly handsome. He had blue eyes, the color of rain. He was commander, highly intelligent, spoke nine languages, very gracious, very poised. And that set the bar very high. And the humor, the engagingness, he, he was approachable, even though he was a high ranking commander. That sets the bar high. And just like you, it has to be a program. <laughs> and these are the points where we come and do we measure up also? And that goes back to that self-esteem that you had as a child. And yet you overcame that. You overcame all these internal obstacles, maybe by other people validating you, but mostly validating yourself. Mm, I love that part. Yes, you, you said it right. The most important thing is we validate ourselves. Yes. Don't yes. wait for other people's approval. You'll be so disappointed in life. You got to learn to love yourself and know that that is the, the most important thing. It's no one can take away from, from us if we know how much we, are, we know we are worth. What you just said is learn to love ourselves. This is not something we're born with. This is a process. And I've made a statement to many people. I said, when you're born, you don't know how to love yourself. Mm -hmm. And there's a representation that comes. That's a wild shot. That's a wild card. You had a representation of exposure to the world. Some people do not. Maybe you could give a tidbit here for the people that have not had the representation of the love from the beginning, the exposure, and how they can come into validating themselves as an adult, especially when we have cool most of social media and we cling to it. Because you're IT and you're on both sides, so I'm <laughs> going to put you on the spot here. <laughs> I would think for me, the most important thing is learning, learning new things, new topic, baking, uh, laundry, how to do the laundry, right? Mm -hmm. Things like that helps us to validate ourselves. Like laundry is a good topic because you can put all the clothes in there, right? It still will wash. Or you can learn how to sort the clothes and say this group together and you put it in first and the temperature has to be a certain way and guess what when it's done better than just put everything in there and you the results are better than the last result mm -hmm. that is empowering that's how i do things it's like it's oh so if simple, I can... but very it, it's true very very augmenting to the self that you've accomplished something that is very important. So my last part is because you want to validate, augment other women. This is something you said to me when we first met, that part of your platform, part of who you are, is to continue to support other women. Would you like to say some words you yes. have pearls of wisdom already. <laughs> They're just lighting up. My whole room's full of pearls. <laughs> um, well, even just with Annalyn, my assistant here in, in the next room, I'm teaching her how to do the task in the office. But in addition, I help her to understand the why behind a lot of actions. So it's developing her as a whole person. I'm not focusing on just executing the task. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me, really interesting to me inside that I know that her cat is doing well better today. Her cat has been having some health issues. 
and that uh, she's able to connect the dots between learning how to make amazing garments, but also being a better daughter to her parents. Mm -hmm. So that's how I consider it's important to me that I am growing a whole person. I'm not just growing one aspect of that person's life. Mm -hmm. I want her to become powerful in every way. Like that, the, the young woman I am mentoring, I want them to be able to soar. I want them to know that they can, it's within their choice that they can be awesome. They can be better. Say, talk about love again, because it's such a big topic in our life. I mean, I had many boyfriends before I met my husband. The key is that you, <laughs> you learn that that is well, not, that, that, is, that. <laughs> that is important. Dating is important. Part of social life is important. Having a like on an Insta Instagram post is important. But that's not everything. That's not everything about us. You know, if someone rejects us at the beginning of my journey, it was hard to accept that. I couldn't believe that he, my math teacher hated me. But I learned to know that I am more valuable. I don't need to be like what he said I am. I have a choice. I think just knowing that we have a choice. And I want other women to feel that way. Okay, today you may feel like you're stuck in something. I don't know, a relationship, a job, or anything. But you have a choice to change today, to tomorrow. Seriously, like, um, I think it's gone with the wind, right? She said, Yes, I have to experience that one. <laughs> tomorrow is another day. That really resonates with me too. Tomorrow is another day. You can write a whole new chapter the next five minutes. You don't have to continue that road for another 10 hours. Change your mind. You're very inspiring. You truly are. I, I, Thank you. I, I, I'm awestruck. I, it's wonderful being able to meet you. Uh, and it was for us that enjoy getting out and doing things for our community and meeting people and being motivating and motivating other people, this made us change and do other things in a different way because we still wanted to motivate people. We still wanted to mm. uh, enhance people. So maybe you can give us a little bit how you've been able to transition out of 2020 or maybe the difficulties and um, because you are very inspiring. Okay, this is what I was, I was doing in March last, uh, in 2020 March, when we first found out that we would be locking down. Um, the first thing I wanted to do was, okay, I'm anxious. I, I, I was anxious. I was nervous. I was like, okay, what, how, how can I calm myself down? So I decided that I am going to learn about how to do my own perfume. <laughs> so I got all these essential oils. I actually apprenticed for a perfumer for like three months. I was helping him with his uh, computer program. So I learned about the process of perfume making. So the scent, the top notes, the base notes, the middle notes. So at that moment, the first thing that came into my mind is like to calm myself. I need some scents. I need some like essential oil. I need something that can give me um, comfort or actually I make different vials right away. And one of them is called hope. <laughs> one of them is called peace. One of them is called walk. So I, creative, I have to channel my creativity into something. And I picked uh, essential oil making really amazing oil and then just walk through the journey like this is the the thing about eating and also essential oil or perfume because of all the layers of scents you know the top notes middle yes. notes base. it's like the first buy or like wine the first sip is like chocolate and then the second one could be vanilla 
you know, I just indulge myself in that world to help myself ease my anxiety. But at the same time, always do good for the world. What I did was I started making my own skin cream and everything and my essential oil. I send them out for free to my friends. I give them away. <laughs> I you want are a gift to people. Oh, thank you. You are a gift to people. You really are. You've gifted me with your presence. Uh, not only um, you are a person that you're, you're insatiable with learning, and I understand that, but you also give back to people learning. And each step, I mean, you're a person that helped people rise to their stardom and keep on going. Oh, thank um, you. I thank you so very, very much uh, for being with us and talking to us. I truly thank you. Thank you.